You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast, episode number 11. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Hey there, Amy Porterfield here, and welcome to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast, and today we have a special guest. Now today I'm interviewing my friend David Seitman Garland, and we're talking about how you can turn your online platform, so your blog, web show, maybe your podcast, into revenue by creating your own online courses. Now, if you followed me for a few years now, you know that I didn't start with online courses. I started with consulting and actually doing social media for brands. But I soon realized that my passion was in training and creating online courses and really building a brand around online trainings. So when I heard that David had started teaching people how to create these online courses, I knew I had to have him on the show. Now, David has this show, The Rise to the Top, and he invites what he calls the best fluff-free experts and doers on his show, where they share their insights and strategies to help you build your platform, grow your audience and subscribers, and make money. Now, I recently got to spend an entire weekend masterminding with David, and I have to admit, I was a little bit nervous to meet him in person because I really wanted him to be exactly how he was in his videos. He's completely crazy, high energy, wickedly smart in all his videos, but sometimes, you know, when you meet someone in person, you're thinking, oh, this isn't the same person. Well, I'm happy to report he's the exact same person. He's even a little bit better in person, if you can imagine. So I am honored to have David on the show today because I've been following him for years. He's become a true friend of mine, and I can't wait to dive in. So let's go ahead and get started. So David, thanks so much for being with me today. I appreciate it. Amy, it is awesome. Getting comfy behind the mic over here. I'm excited to be here. It's going to be a good time for sure. So here's the deal. One of my favorite things about you is your story. I mean, it is really good. And I was hoping you would just share with us kind of how this whole, the rise to the top came about. Yeah, you know, it's a bit of a crazy story. So, I mean, it started 2008. So that's like a hundred years ago in internet terms, you know? Right. And and you got to realize like when I started, I didn't come from any kind of like internet marketing background or like online business background or anything like that. Like I had no experience at all what I was doing at no fan base, no pre-existing fan base, not a lot of business connections. Like literally I was starting from pretty much scratch, you know, and I came up with this idea to basically to get started interviewing people that I really looked up to kind of in the online business space, you know, and thinking to myself, okay, you know, how can I connect with these people? So I wanted to build a platform around these sort of like interviews, basically. Um, And and in 2008, I took basically my bar mitzvah money um, and everything (laughs) that I had to kind of get this thing started. Really not much of a game plan, like everything I don't teach. You know what I mean? (laughs) It's like it's like doing everything that I that I would not teach to do, you know, and I just threw myself into this world, you know, with with like no viewers, no audience, started a web show, started a blog, started my online platform, no clue what the heck I was doing. It was just me hitting refresh like 18 times a day. And I think my mom tuning in and like maybe my Cocker Spaniels and stuff, you know, at the time that were my mom's dogs. And, you know, so that's really how the rise to the top started uh, way back in the day. It was just an idea and something to kind of start an online platform. Okay, so that leads to a great question I have. A lot of people listening are just starting out or they've kind of changed directions and they want to do something new. So let's just kind of get into the Tony Robbins world for a minute here and talk mindset. When you started out and you knew your mom and the Cocker Spaniels were listening and pretty much not anyone else, what kept you going? Yeah, you know, you know, here's here's really what kept me going. That's a great question, you know, because it's 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 a tricky question too. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, really for me, it was I loved the idea of trying to control my own destiny, you know, and basically ha- create a business around the lifestyle that I wanted, which was kind of like 
very fun, a fun business that wasn't that stressful that, you know, I could work on, but also could allow me freedom if I want to go play, you know, softball in the middle of the day or go play hockey with friends or something like that, that I'm not trapped in the business itself. You know, I yep. wanted to create something that was, I, you know, it sounds so cliche, but it's so true, right? It's like freedom based, you know? Oh yeah. And for, and for me, I just, I was like, okay, I'm going to figure this out. I don't know how to do it. I had no, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to try, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to keep moving forward. As I started to get, you know, a little bit more success, I, I would do things like, you know, buy products and programs and coaching and go to events and, and, and tried to really immerse myself in this, but make sure that I was implementing, you know, I didn't care if I screwed up stuff, but anything that I would bought, buy or do or learn, I would try my very best to actually implement it. <laughs> you yes, know what I mean? That is and, something really overlooked by most people that are buying programs these days. Yeah. I, you know, I, there's people out there that are, you know, bless their happy hearts, but they're, they're, um, you know, kind of what I call serial learners, you know, and learning is great. You know that Amy, I know you're a big fan of that as well, but really what you want to be is a serial implementer, you know, yep. and, 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 you know, keep trying things. Like I see there's two people that I'm keeping in mind right now. And there's one that I know where, uh, they buy every single product that comes on the market or service or whatever. It's like shiny red ball to shiny red ball and the business doesn't move forward. Right. Right. And then the other person is what I would call like an event horde. Uh, that, almost <laughs> sound, that almost sounded really, really bad, but you know what I'm saying? You can yep. say whore or horde either way you want to go here. <laughs> um, but, uh, where they attend every single event in the history of events. They're like throwing business cards, like a business card ninja, like they're out there doing that kind of stuff, but they don't really move the business forward. And, and that's where I think kind of one of my, my strengths is, is always kind of, you know, moving forward, changing, pivoting, but always trying something. Oh, yeah. I think that's such a great lesson. I always say you've got to always be taking action. And I'm just like you. I've purchased so many programs and I've loved them. And I've been guilty of purchasing those programs and not diving in enough. But over the span of it, I've really taken most of what I've learned and put it into action. And I think that kind of is similar with both of us where we just keep moving forward. And I think just to touch on that, another great thing about when you're just starting out, like when your mom's just the only one that's really paying attention is that sometimes we don't know how bad it is. Like when I look back in my first years, oh my God, I didn't yeah. know that it was pretty bad. I didn't know that even though I was just earning maybe a thousand bucks a month or something, I was super happy because I was on my own. So you just kind of make do with what you have until you finally kind of, I always say I finally got my groove with my business just really just a few years back. So it's kind of nice to know what you don't know in the beginning as well. Do you know what yeah, I mean? And, yeah. And one thing off of that, I think that's important is, is something that, you know, people that are, that are listening to this, Amy, that are kind of in our world and I like to call the world mediapreneurship, right? Like mediapreneur. That's what does that mean? What we are. Uh, so it's it's a phrase I came up with in a shower, and thank God I trademarked now because a lot of people are using. Oh, it. smart! But, but, uh, I came up with a shower a few years ago because I was trying to come up with like like a word to describe us. You know what I mean? And the thing is, I didn't quite love the word like expert, quote unquote. Even though I I understand everyone understands that word, I didn't really love the word like blogger or content creator or something like that. So I want to create like a new phrase that was basically for people that have or are building an online platform and are using that to basically generate revenue from their expertise or something that they know. So um, blog, so that, web show, podcast, that kind of platform. Yeah, so, some kind of platform, some kind of online platform. I don't care if it's funny drawings, you know, whatever it is. Some kind of online free platform that you create great content. Um, and then also a business that is built off of that, usually based around information of some kind. Um, and, and that's kind of where, where, that, where that phrase came from. And, you know... For me, it's just it's just interesting because that space has evolved, uh, you know, so much mediapreneurship. And I think it's just a, a very exciting kind of place to be in right now, for sure. Oh, it really is. And, you know, I was thinking, OK, so you started this, you started the rise to the top and you started to get some momentum. But then kind of where did you go from there? Because you're in a whole different space than even just like a year ago, it seems. Oh, yeah. OK, so uh, this is great. Hold on your hats, kids, for this one. So, you know, so when I started, I had what I call the media mentality. 
and it's, it was the wrong mentality, right? So what do I mean by the media mentality? It's not necessarily wrong, but it's just not, you know, where we're at now, right? Yeah. So my media mentality was this. It was kind of looking at, okay, some of these sites online and saying, you know what? I want to be big. I want to be broad. I want to have advertisers. I want to have sponsors, all this kind of stuff. And I'm going to ride off into the sunset or something like that. Like I didn't know exactly, Beautiful. <laughs> I didn't exactly know where the end of the equation was, but it was kind of this kind of big, broad, tons and tons of content. Like I would publish five times a week, stuff like that. You know what I mean? And, and you know, just tons and tons of stuff, volume, 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 big, 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 big. Okay. Okay. So then at some point, and you know, I think this had to do with kind of struggling a bit and also burning out a little bit as well. You That's know, when a you're big creating factor. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Burning out, a little bit of struggle, a little bit of figuring this stuff out. I realized that I wanted to be a media I wanted to to move to the mediapreneur mindset. And the mediapreneur mindset is very different. And the idea is that you're really dominating a very specific type of audience and niche. It's not about, you know, being big and broad and about hundreds and zillions and whatever of hits. It's about having a passionate community um, of people that that really resonate with you. And for me, that was the mediapreneurs, you know what I mean? That, that type of people that had a platform because, you know, entrepreneurship is very broad and that's kind of where I started. You know, it's everything from the mom and pop shop on the corner to, you know, an attorney that's out on their own to a tech startup in Silicon Valley. So I really narrowed down the focus over time and really kind of laser cut the audience. That was number one. And number two, and this I, I think is even more important, is, and this is where my business really took off, was that I said, okay, yeah, sponsors, advertisers, okay. Like I still have a couple of those or whatever, but long-term success of a mediapreneur business is going to be based on creating your own products and programs, okay? This gets sounds so basic to some people, and for other people, you're going to be like, oh, Okay, that makes sense. But you got to realize I came from a very different world of just trying to figure this stuff out. I didn't know that the tipping point for my business was going to be like get away from being sort of a quote unquote reporter or whatever you want to call it and get into, you know, the person that actually teaches and shares and creates products and programs. Yeah. And once I did that, that's when the business just took off like into the stratosphere once I was very clear on the audience and then once I started creating my own products and programs. Okay, so this is big because this is what why you and I love each other so much. We have this because I know you love me. We have this. Oh, in, <laughs> more than words can express. I knew it. We have this in common because this has changed my life. Creating online programs. I know that sounds dramatic, but it's true. It truly changed my life. So I want to jump in here for anyone that's listening and thinking, okay, but I wasn't really in the media space. I don't really, I didn't do what David does or I don't do what David does. If you consult if you coach, if you're getting to a point that it's feeling like I can only have so many clients in a day that you finally see that that ceiling of how much money you can make because of that, those are also those experiences where people start to think, wait a second, there's I can I know I can reach more people and there's a different way to do this. And that was it for me. I was doing a lot of one on one consulting. I had really big clients. It was awesome. I was so burned out that I didn't know if I could continue. And this was only over like a period of a year and a half I got burned out. So I think it's different for everybody, but this topic is so exciting because it can just change your business drastically. Yeah, and they th and Amy, thanks for pointing that out because that that what a great point there too because it, it's it's almost like all the paths leading to the same spot. You know yep. what I mean? And that spot is creating your own product, right? Yeah. And I've seen so many different paths lead there, and, and you know, it's the it's the burnt out person who doesn't want to do dollars for hours anymore. You know, it's That's the it. It, it, it's the it's the uh, the blogger or the web show host or the podcaster who can't like needs to get consistent revenue going. You know, there's there's all these different types of kind of places and that's not the only two. It's the author that, you know, has busted their butt their whole life selling books but isn't making that much money from earning 7 cents a book or whatever it might be. You know, there's all these different reasons, but they all end up leading to that like sweet spot uh, about, you know, creating your own product and selling it to people. Okay, so this is my this is why I wanted to bring you on the show because a lot of people that want to create a product, where they get stuck is, wait a second, I can't create a product. I don't, I don't know what I could create a product about. And it's such an easy answer, I know, but talk a little bit about that where people get stuck in just knowing what to create. 
Yeah, I mean, that's the first thing is, is that, you know, people get hung up. There's lots of different reasons. It's what do I create? How do I sell it? All these different questions come up. Um, so maybe, you know, Amy, it'd be helpful. I could kind of share how sort of I came up with my first big product. Yes. Um, and I think that's going to help people. And, and, and just to give you a scope of this, my first product, my big, my big first hit, right, was called Create Awesome Interviews, which taught people, shockingly, how to do their own interview show like this one, Amy. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, the, a lot of people ask me, well, well, David, how'd you come up with that? And I got to be honest, it wasn't my idea. It was not my idea. Really? So, so here's how I came up with it. And, and there's, these are exact like replicable steps that anyone can do. If you have any kind of following online or anyone that trusts you at all in this world. Okay. This so, is juicy. I love the step-by-step step stuff. Okay. Very juicy. Give it to us. Okay. So the, the principle is number one here is called the pay attention principle. Okay. So here's what you got to think about. If you, you know, have been receiving emails from people, you know, that maybe have found you online or something like that. What topics do they ask you about? You know, what topics are they asking you about? It might be something so simple under your nose because a lot of people say, okay, go out there and create an information project. Go out there and create an online course. Um, go find something to create it on. And I'm under the strong belief that everyone already knows something that they could package up and sell right now. And you're just not thinking of it. I so agree. it's not a case of like going out there and being like, oh, what can I figure out what to do like and learn? There's something right now that you've done that you can teach other people that they will pay for. OK, got so you've got to be paying attention on your site, on social media, on email. What questions are you getting all the time? What are the common questions that are coming in? And, you know, so, for example, for me. I realized that all these questions that were coming in via email were stuff like, how do I record an interview show? How do I record on Skype? How do I get someone to say yes to an interview? Um, how do I, you know, post an interview on my site? Like all, whatever. The endless questions with the common thread being all about, you know, creating these interviews, right? And so once, it's sort of like when you buy a red car, um, once you buy a red car, you start noticing like every other red car on the road. So once you start to put these kind of clues together in the puzzle, like you're playing the game Clue, you're going to start to pick up trends. You're going to start to pay attention. You're going to start to see, you know, what stuff have you done that has resonated with your audience? Do you have a how-to post in the past that worked out really well, even if it was on something very simple? If you have videos, did you ever do how-to videos on something that, you know, got a great response? And so really you're going to start to quantify this pretty quickly as you start to think about what are you already being asked about? Um, and, and there's a product right there for a lot of different people. Okay, that's good. That kind of leads me to, I've you know already heard you talk about this, so I'm kind of cheating, but you had this great piece of content about what sells and what doesn't sell. And you, you got to talk about that. Yeah, so you know, just because there's something that people ask you about, right? doesn't automatically equate to dollars. If it did, that'd be amazing, right? Like people would ask like, how are you doing today? And you'd be like, that's going to make me a lot of money. <laughs> um, you know, that would be a bling bling mofo. So um, that was like, <laughs> that's my first mofo of the day. Um, I'm keeping it like PG-13 here. Amy, good, that's how, good. That's how I, I like I, it. That's how, that's how I roll. <laughs> uh, I don't want to get the iTunes ban. So, okay. Yeah. So let's talk about here. And, and this is stuff. And you got to realize, Amy, um, being the weird person that I am, uh, some people might be thinking, well, David, how do, how do you know all this stuff, right? So number one is from personal experience, just straight up experimenting and figuring it out myself, you know, and, and having courses that have generated multiple six figures and stuff like that. But also my obsession with talking to people about this. So I, I interviewed and sat down with, you know, the top course creators and product creators to find out what worked, what didn't, you know what I mean? So yeah. with everything here, this all comes from combination of doing it and research. So what sells? Well, here's what sells. Number one is step-by-step -step systems. Anything where you're literally taking someone's little paw, their hand, right? <laughs> and pulling them along and saying, step one, you do this. Step two, you do that. Step three, you do that. Step-by-step -step systems sell, right? It's a paint by the numbers type of situation. Yep. And going along with that, how to information, right? So that goes along with step by step. Um, but how to information, as you know, Amy, as someone that creates products for, you know, small businesses and entrepreneurs on Facebook, um, you know, you know this, that how to information at the end of the day is what sells online. Completely. Period, when it comes to when it comes to these products. 
um, a big one here, number three. So, so you got step-by-step and how-to information. And this is one where people start to get a little bit hung up here. And this is where you don't want to skip over this part is where there's an actual outcome. There's an actual outcome. So you're saying if someone is awesome enough to purchase your course from you, they are the man or the woman. They hand you the, the hard-earned dollars here. They, they put your course and they do everything you say with no complaining, okay? <laughs> what will actually happen? Like, will they lose 50, like, will they lose 20 pounds? Will they, um, you know, build a, a five-figure a month business? Will they um, have, you know, the prettiest home on the block? I don't know what it is, right? right. But bottom line is having a very specific outcome. You know, so for my example, my course, Create Awesome Interviews, my, 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 my big first flagship course, it was a step-by-step system on how to create your interview show. It was a how-to. And the actual outcome was at the end of the day, you're going to have your interview show up online. You're going to be marketing it and promoting it and generating leads from it, right? Yeah. So there was stuff that was, all, that was already there. The next thing, and, and this is a couple more to keep in mind here, is that Again, it's stuff that you already know and you have your own results from it. Stuff you already know and you have your own results from it. So there's nothing more powerful than your own social proof. You know, how you lost 20 pounds, something like that, right? Or 100 pounds, whatever it might be. Um, People love personal, you know, testimonials when it comes to this kind of stuff. And, you know, whether it's your own results or someone else's results, like Amy, you could be saying, hey, you know, here's how I grew a Facebook you know, someone on Facebook, their company or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's something that had your impact. That's the best way of saying it. It doesn't necessarily have, have to happen to you. Um, it's just that you got the results either for yourself or someone else, right? Cool. Um, and, and so, it, you know, having that and tying in there, you know, there's a, there's a woman that came to me once and she said, you know, I want to do a course and I want to do it on creating a six-figure blog. So great. I said, that, that sounds super interesting. I was like, do you have a six-figure blog? Or how much is yours generating? She's like, no, it's not generating any money. Oh, no. And I'm like, well, I think we've chosen the wrong path, my dear. Yes. Um, Just because, you know, again, this isn't about BSing people. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's going to be based on what you already know. And, you know, but let's just not discount. There's there's lots of things that you know right now that you could turn into this. Um, And the the final thing here, the final thing to kind of keep in mind is that, if you have a pre-existing audience out there, so let's just say you've got a, uh, you know, a blog on you know, decorating or something like that, right? Or whatever it might be. If you have an existing audience already, realize that your product or your course doesn't necessarily have to appeal to the entire audience. Oh, that's a good point. It does not have to appeal to 100% of the people in your audience. I would say that Create Awesome uh, interviews, you know, my course... Uh, uh, probably applied to 5% of my audience or something like that. And that ended up doing multiple six figures, right? Because you're looking for the right people in your audience. You don't necessarily have to look at every single person in the audience because at the end of the day, and if you're, if you're going to take home something from this kind of lesson here, here's one of the big ones. Okay. So listen up on this one is that specific cells, very, very specific cells, but very specific sells more at a higher price point. Oh, so true. Give it, give an example of that, but I'm totally with you there. Okay. Let me give you an example. I'll give you one. This is a very, very, very simple example. Okay. Let's say Amy, that you were not a Facebook expert. You were an expert on LinkedIn. Okay. okay? All right. Let's just make that up. Actually, you know what? Let's use Facebook. Let's use Facebook. Okay. okay. So you could, you, you could create a kind of what I call generic product. And it could be like how to dominate on Facebook, right? Okay. Very broad. I don't really know who that's for. Like, what does dominate mean? Do you know what I'm saying? And, and the next thing you know, that's maybe something that could sell, you know, 47 to, you know, maybe 97, something like that. But very, very broad. It would be very difficult to sell. Gotcha. Okay? So now let's say you decide to say, okay, I'm going to get a little bit more specific. How to generate leads on Facebook. Okay, how to generate leads on Facebook, which is some stuff that you do, Amy, right? Yeah. As well. Well, that's more specific. We're we're, we're narrowing it down. And products like that could sell, you know, maybe upwards of 197, 
somewhere in that range because now we have a, a more specific outcome that's associated with it, right? So Completely. now we're in that now we're in that specific range, okay? But what if we took it one step further? And this is where people stop. They stop at that second place, right? They say, it's scary okay, to go beyond that. Oh, it's scary, my friends. Yeah. Let me, it is, you will be like, you will be shaking <laughs> in your little booties. But this is the mo, this is the magic. This is the magic moment here, if you will, is that what if you created one that was called how to generate leads on Facebook for attorneys, for attorneys. Okay. Yeah. I'm just making that one up. Could be for whoever. No, but there's but money in that. There is so much money in that. That it's not even funny. You could be selling stuff four hundred to two thousand dollars in that range, and, and the reason is because, and upwards from that, because when an attorney comes, in, they're they're going to be like, oh my god, this is hand picked for me, hand created for me, you know. And what we're seeing online here is that you do not need to sell thousands of these to be successful. You that's know, it, so it, true. You know, that's what's important. Think about this. Let's say, Amy, you price something at $997, okay? And it was how to generate leads on Facebook for attorneys. And and you sell, you know, uh, you sell, let's just say you sell one a day of those. Okay. That's 365 grand or so a year. I mean, that's crazy one if you look day. at it that way. Yeah, I mean, one a day, that's 365 total customers, you know, uh, you don't need that many customers no. to be successful. So like for me, think about how specific this is. If you guys just want a real example, like my course on Create Awesome Interviews was for people who want to create an online web show or podcast specifically on interviewing, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Specifically on interviewing and they're a mediapreneur. Like that, how many people are that? Well, it's hundreds, if not thousands of people. And by doing that, you, you now have a very successful online program. It does not have to appeal to every single person. It, it just has to appeal to the right people. And I think if you get into that mentality, you're going to start creating just more epic programs that fewer but higher quality people are going to buy for a higher price point. You've got your product. So because I like using your example so people can really see how this is done. So you got really focused on that ideal audience. And, and like you said, it was a little scary, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly is because it's not a case of just saying, you know, because people, they just don't want to go to that next level. You know what I mean? Like they're happy to go a little bit more specific, but they don't want to go to, you, people are afraid of turning off people. Yeah. Right? You're afraid of people saying this isn't for me. Well, when people say that, that's the greatest possible thing they could say. Because when, when, um, because you're so clear that it's either for them or not for them. Yes, you, know you just I mean? reminded me. I was going to say refunds tend to be a lot less. Oh, for sure. Yeah, when you get really specific on your audience. Exactly, because you're, you're, you're telling them like, look, this is for you. If it's not for you, we can depart friends. <laughs> yes. Here. It's not a big deal, but it, it, this is who it's for and this is who it's not for. You, have to, you can't, it, it's exclusionary in a good way. Um, and, and, and for me, you know, what 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 I had to do with that is is really when I was kind of um, kind of testing this out was once that initial idea was in my head for doing the interviews, the next thing that I did, and this anyone can do. I mean, I didn't go out there and spend any money to test this. You know, I didn't say like, oh, I'm going to go spend a bunch of money to see if I can test this and see if there's some traction here. Um, you know, I used my own audience. So you know, I I used my own audience, and I basically did a couple how to posts on my site based on these kind of interview questions, right? Like just basically seeing how did people resonate with this, you know? Oh, that's good. And, and I got a huge, big response. Like one was how to do side-by-side -side interviews or something like that. And another one was like how to connect with influential people and interview them, something like that, right? Right. And, and, and those posts did extremely well. Um, and by well, it, you know, everyone has their own metrics that what you can go by, but whether it's comments or views or or tweets or whatever you want to go by, you know what the average post on your site gets, you know, or so. Um, and you can, you can, you know, when you have a hit on your hand, you yeah, know, so true. Um, and so, and so for the second step there is really that you're, you, you kind of test by throwing out a few how to things just to see kind of how people are feeling about that. Um, and, and that is kind of an important second step there because, you know, really this is all no cost here. I mean, you're just, you're just giving stuff a shot. If you don't get a response and no one cares about it, move on to something else. 
Um, right. You know, you're not really spending a bunch of money here. We're not creating anything yet. We're still kind of in that figuring it out stage. And that's kind of the big second test after paying attention is really to get that research going using your own site and audience. Okay. So what do you do or what did you do once people started really resonating with those how-to posts? Yeah. So once they resonated, that's when I moved into the third kind of step here. And this, again, all this stuff, take this, do it, do it on your own here, um, is the third step was to do a quick like blog post, you know, and it could be a video or blog post, doesn't matter what it is, and lead people to a survey. Oh, okay. okay. And, and this is, this was really, really critical um, for a few different reasons. Number one is now you're really going to get people's like candid response. And number two, this is going to be the beginning of sort of your prospects list for this course eventually. Nice. Right? It, it's, it's these people that are responding early on because they're always the most passionate. I can tell you right now, people that responded to the survey um, were some of my, you know, I didn't continue to be some of my most loyal customers. I bet. So all I did was, and this is so easy, I, I use, you can use anything you want for the survey. I used Wufu, W-U-F-O-O uh, F -O -O dot com, but anything that does a survey, use Google Docs, doesn't matter. Um, I, I basically asked an open-ended question. I said that, you know, I get a lot of questions about doing online interviews and doing an online interview show, and I want to help out. And I was just curious, what are your major questions that I can help out with, you know, involving this topic? And That's this was it. like a blog post or a video you did and you just yeah, asked the question? Post. I said, here's the question. Here's a link to the survey. Okay? Nice. Okay. Very important. You, you do want to send a survey because, you know, it gets people to actually, you know, do it privately, um, you know, and you're getting their email address, which I think is, you know, critical really as well. Really good. This is this. great for people that don't yet have a list and they want to build it in the process. Exactly. Exactly. So you said, you know, all I required on the survey was name, email, and then an open-ended box to ask as many questions as they wanted. Right. Easy. And, and that's it. And, and, and the next thing you know is you're going to start getting results in. You're going to start getting people in. And, and I guarantee you, you know, if you if you do all this stuff right now, and by the way, and you go back and listen to this again, you're going to be like, oh, David, you're so right. The questions that come in, you're going to be like, oh, my God, how does not everyone know this? Yes, that is such a great point. I'm so glad you brought that up. Right. You're going to sit there and be like, oh, your mind's going to be like exploding. You're gonna be like, what? What? Like, like how? You know, yes. how do people not know this? Not, and you're gonna realize now. It's kind of that plight of the expert or plight of the mediapreneur, if you will, here, where you know so much, but you didn't think you knew that much. You know, yes, it's and a now, great moment. Yeah, it's a great moment, and you're like, oh my god, people want to know all the way down to this very basic stuff. Um, and you know, that survey is really the beginning of kind of your product, you know, your course. Because realize when I sent the survey out, and I think this is very important, Amy, to, to think about as well, I didn't say anything like this. I didn't say, hey, Amy uh, and everyone, please fill out the survey. I'm thinking about doing a product. Okay, so you did I'm not say that. I'm thinking about doing a course. I'm thinking about doing this. I'm thinking about doing that. I didn't tell them anything I'm thinking about doing. Okay. You know, I just wanted to get their raw, because I think that immediately changes how people think about it. Oh, good point. You know okay. what I mean? Like they're thinking like, promotion, oh my God. promotion, you're selling. Yeah, right. But this was just literally like, listen, guys, I want to help out. I want to know what are your burning questions. And, and, and honestly, what you'll end up noticing is not only is this going to change your mindset, you're also going to pick up the language used by people. Important. You know, are they using some specific word or, or phrase over and over again? You're going to pick out, um, you know, things like, you, honestly, you're going to start to get the outline for this. You're going to start to realize that people are asking things that fall into a few different categories. You know, whether it's a, maybe for me, it was a tech question, a marketing question, a setup question, uh, or a interview itself question. You know what I mean? Yep. Next thing you know, you, you're now starting to kind of create an organic outline for this. Um, and, and the thing is, I want to encourage you guys when you, when you give this a shot, and I encourage you to give it a shot, don't get hung up on the numbers too much. So don't worry about, like, you know, you know what the size of your audience is. So if you only get, you know, 20 to 30 responses, but, you know, your list isn't very big and you're more in the beginning phase, that's huge. True. You know, so don't, don't think that you have to get out there and like, you know, get 10,000 responses to think that this is going to go well for you. It's really not like that at all. It's so true. And I think one of your points is get creative with how you promote the survey, right? Yes. So I, I'm always a, a big believer when you have when you have a platform. And that's why having a platform is like everything. Amy, you know what I mean? It's like you're it it's like it's that base that you need. And I don't care what the platform is as long as you have it. <laughs> right. Um, is that what I like to do 
is I like to make like kind of a little minor laundry list of things that you do every time you want to promote something. This right? is good. Yeah. And, and it's not for necessarily for sale. It's just like I said, we're promoting a survey here. It's not, it's not promoting anything for sale. It's just a, a how do I reach the most possible people that follow me basically. Right? right. And so the way that I do it is I always start with some kind of post or video, you know, um, then I always send it to all the social media sites that I'm on, you know, every single thing out there, make sure I'm interacting. I might even buy a promoted post on Facebook or something like that. I like it. You know, whatever we want to do, send it out to all the social media, send out an e-blast to all my subscribers. Okay. And then any other content that I'm doing over the next couple of weeks, like let's say I'm doing a podcast or something like that. I'm going to reference back to it all the time. Oh, that's right? good. Yeah. You know, so, so don't just assume that you've got like one shot to get everyone and it disappears. Just remember, people are going to see it at different times. So I, you really, if you think you're saying it way too much on a bunch of different things, you're not saying it that much as you think. <laughs> that's true. I think we're extra sensitive to that. And that makes such a great point. You got to get creative and resourceful with getting this um this blog post or video out there. It might be the perfect time for you to do a guest blog post on yep. somebody else's site or like you said, get interviewed or you know, b- contribute a tip to somebody else's blog or whatever it might be. This is the perfect time to start driving some traffic. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's just, you know, it, it, and I'm a big believer in just not having random traffic, like have them come to you f- with a purpose here. You yes. Know? yes. And, and so and so I think that, you know, I go through like a, a, a small checklist every time that I put something up and just think to myself, OK, just making sure I'm covering all my bases. Am I repeating it a few times? You know, I mean, am I using my real estate well on my site? Um, you know, th- those are things that are critical. And, you know, definitely over the next few weeks or whatever it might be, linking back to that over and over again on other posts um, uh, can continue to drive that traffic. Okay, cool. So once you get the word out there, now people are filling out your survey. Well, what did you do? Well, I mean, you know, really when it when it came down to that point, you know, after you get to that survey and and you're going through there um, and you're looking at that stuff, it's really kind of about feeling the temperature. Uh, at that point, you know, so for me, I, th- I was like, you know, I think we have something here. You know, I think I think we really do have something that we can go ahead now and kind of start to out- outline a course. Um, and so, you know, really, those are the first three major steps that you get into. It's really the, uh, you know, paying attention principle, the research and, you know, kind of the testing and sort of feeling the temperature uh, of the response at that point. And, you know, I think that at that point, you're going to you're going to start to really create that scope um, of, you know, what what you want to sell. Um, and, you know, I, it, it can it, it helps you in terms of, um, you know, understanding the market as well also helps, you know, Amy, like yes. like, you know, meaning at this point, you know, one more tip here, for folks, that you're going to see, you know, OK, who else in my market is creating anything similar to this, right? Like go out there on Twitter, go out there on Facebook, go out there and, you know, be a sleuth and figure out who else is selling anything similar. Like I saw other courses out there and other products on that. Um, and, you know, some people are like, oh, crap, that means I'm done. I mean, someone else already did it, right? Right. Well, no, I see the opposite. I see this as an incredible opportunity uh, because there's ways that you can stick out from the pack. Trust me, that's a whole nother interview right oh, there. It is, yeah. But but the idea here is when you see other products and associations or anything associated with kind of the topic that you're talking about, it shows that people are spending money on it. And oh, that is point. an incredible good news because you don't want to have a topic where nobody spends money on it. You know, you don't want to necessarily be the world's first course in something um, because you know, you're going into a little bit of a, of a uh, unproven market. So for me, I love to see. I looked out there. I saw that there was another one on doing a web show. I saw that there was a very, very short product on just how to interview. I saw a couple other things out there, but I knew that my kind of unique experience and my teaching style and some other things would help me stick out from the pack. So if you get to this point where you start to look around and find other stuff in your market, um, that's a good thing because, again, it's, it's kind of proving that you uh, that you 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 have something here. Oh, it's such a great point. And these 
tips. I think anybody can walk away from this episode today and start really putting into motion what their program could look like. And I'm so excited about it because like I said earlier, it definitely changed my business dr- dramatically. And I know it did yours as well. And you continue just to get better. Like my first program and looking at my programs now are drastically different, but they still, that very first program still sold well. So it's amazing how much better you can get. But in the very beginning, you can still do a really solid program and see big results from it. Yeah. And, and the thing is, you just got to, I know it, it sounds so cliche, Amy, right? You got to do it. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I am the first one to tell you, like, I am not a procrastinator. Right. And I procrastinated on this. You yeah. know what I mean? Like when I was, when I was, I, I totally wish I did it two years earlier. You know? Oh, that's such a great point. And so many people will tell me I'm working on my program. And like six months later, they'll say I'm working on my program. And six months later, they're still working on it. I think you make a great point about you just got to do it. When I was creating FB Influence, I had like this, I'm totally old school and have to write everything down. And I had this like little calendar where I made sure every module had a due date and I had <laughs> to stick with it. Right. And, and I remember I was talking to you not too long ago. I know you've been creating another program and you were saying, oh my God, I'm like in the trenches. All I'm doing is, you know, creating content right now, but you were super focused. Yeah. And that, and that happens like, it's like the, the hard one's the first one, you know what I mean? Oh, and, yeah. so, and, and so it's a case of like, you know, people procrastinate on this kind of stuff. And, and, it, and there's like, there's, here's one of the, one of the problems that I just want people to get over if they're sitting here having a little problem, you know, <laughs> is, is that, is that, you know, I, I was asked this question, I actually did a video on it recently on my site was people asking me all the time, like, when's the perfect time to come out with my course, right? Like, when's the time, like, do I need to have a certain amount of people in my audience? Do I need to have been creating online content for a certain amount of time? Do I have to have a certain amount of this? Do I have to have a certain amount of that? And the answer is really no, right? Like there's no perfect time to create your course and get it out there to the world, right? Like it might not be, you know, there's just, don't let that be like where all of a sudden the the course fairy is going to come walking in and be like, now today's the day. You know what I mean? Like you've been waiting for it. And today's the day you've been ordained. Like if you want to be ordained, like I'll ordain you right now, like a knighthood uh, that you can go out and do this because only positive things can happen from it. And, you know, that that's why I think it's so critical. It's going to help, you know, solidify you in the space as an expert. Uh, it's going to help, you know, hopefully generate revenue, get big results for people. And, and at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So true. And it's really fun. Would you agree? Like creating these programs, it's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, totally. And it's funny because I, I live in St. Louis, as, as you know, Amy, and like there's like very few product cre- online product creators and media entrepreneurs around here, you know? Oh, good point. So I, I feel like I'm in like the, the nerdiest little happy haven, you know, <laughs> if you will, like where I, no one knows what I'm doing. I'm at like Starbucks with like a little evil grin on my face. You know what I mean? Like, because I, yeah, it, it really, really is fun uh, as you go through these processes. And it's just, uh, you know, it, it's just great because again, once you have it, right, Amy, like once you have it and once you've, you've shipped the darn thing out here, for God's sakes, you have something that could potentially sell, you know, with the right systems 24 seven. And, yes. and, and, you know, you wake up, you know, and I know this feeling is, is incredible is that feeling where you wake up and you go and you roll over and you grab your iPhone, even though you're not supposed to be doing that first in the morning, but we all, we all look do at it. it. First. And, you know, the, the first thing that you do um, is you you look and boom, you have a sale overnight, right? There, there's no better feeling, I think. I agree. You know, than, than, than having that. And so, um, you know, and the only way you're going to do that is if you get it out to the world. It's so true. And one way to help everybody listening, the reason why I invited David on the show now, because I've wanted him on forever, and we could talk about probably 20 different topics that you, in my opinion, are a pro with, But this one really resonates with most people. And so when you told me you had a free training that kind of gets way deeper into all of this, I was like, oh, we got to have you on the show right now. And we got to talk about that stuff. So I want to tell everybody that you do have a free training and I created a special link to it. amyporterfield.com forward slash the rise, like the rise to the top. So amyporterfield.com forward slash the rise. I'm going to link to everything in the show notes, but tell them a little bit about this free training. Cool. Yeah, well, definitely. Well, I'm super excited for this. I mean, I I love creating these like high quality free trainings as well. And so basically what I've done is I put together uh, a free video series for you guys to really take 
you know, your online platform, whether it's a blog, web show, podcast, right, and turn it into revenue with your online course. And, you know, we're going to go over in the first video even more in depth a lot of the stuff that we went over today like like even into a crazy depth i know amy you've seen that first video so you can i have and this is what i gotta say it's not like a free course that he's gonna like skim over stuff and then want you to buy a bunch of stuff he like gets into detail about his personal experience and goes over a lot of the steps he did here but even more detail it's really good yeah, ab- well, I appreciate that, Amy. Thank you. And yeah, that's what I try to pride myself. I, 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 I want to give you guys like super high quality stuff. So, you know, definitely check it out, um, you know, and it, it can get you in this right track. You can see a lot of the comments below already from people that are just rocking out with it. And I, I really hope you enjoy the series and uh, hope, hope to have you have an opportunity in one of my programs as well. Awesome. Well, David, thank you so much. This is valuable stuff. I knew we'd have a good time and I really appreciate you coming on the show. AP, you are a uh, master of disaster. It was always great to, <laughs> great, to ha- great to chat with you. All right, talk to you soon. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this interview just as much as I have. Now, all the links we talked about in the show can be found at amyporterfield.com 11. So the number 11. Also, if you like this podcast, I would really love for you to tell your friends. Just go to amyporterfield.com forward slash love and you can tweet about it and help me spread the word. So until next time, make it a great week. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com. 